Well, good morning. Sorry we can't meet together. It's kind of weird talking to a computer screen, and uh, but I want to be able to share with you uh, some thoughts that the Lord's really been putting on my heart um, over the last couple of days, um, and be able to use this kind of as a tool that we can use for worship, as we can't gather together in our congregations and in our core building, but we can gather around a computer or a phone uh, or even a TV and uh, be able to still share and worship uh, together. So I hope everyone's great. I'm greeting you guys in the name of Jesus, and um, who is still in control uh, despite our fears and despite all that that going around right now with the viruses and whatnot. Um, but he's still sovereign. He's still on the throne, and um, we're going to worship him today. And so I just want to share kind of what he's put on my heart um, with you. Uh, times are very scary. Um, and they're a little uncertain right now. And, and fear is prevalent across our world. And it, the news and social media is not helping in any way. Um, and so as we look at this, you know, we, we talk about this hope that we have in Christ. And we talk about the hope that we have um, in Jesus, the, the resurrected Lord. And the world doesn't really understand why we would have such hope. And so um, I just want to remind you of that, that our hope is found in Christ. Um, our hope in God is stronger than anything that the world um, or the devil or a virus or any of that can can throw our way. Our hope is found in him. And so um, be reminded of that today. I want to take a few minutes and just give you a thought the Lord's placed on my heart as I've uh, been working this week and, and just kind of pouring over what should I do in response to this this nightmare that we're feeling right now, um, do we continue to resource you with web material, or should I just give you my thoughts? And so I, I just kind of feel like you'd want to hear from me. I hope you do. Um, and so I want to share with that. And at the end of this, I'll leave you with a couple questions. If you're if you're looking at this by yourself, or if you're with a family or whatever, um, to either reflect on or just kind of talk amongst yourselves these questions and kind of ask what the Lord's um, leading you to do or how, he, how he's speaking to your heart. And so we just want to leave that with you as you're uh, quarantined away and taking care of yourself and your families. Um, life's pretty scary right now. Panic is on set and uh, toilet paper cannot be found anywhere. Uh, your stores are closing. People are getting laid off. And on top of that, we are under attack by a virus that we can't see. And all we can do is all we're being told is stay away from people, social distance, uh, and wash your hands. Wash your hands. And uh, that that's pretty scary. Um, it's pretty scary. It's a thing of, of disaster movies. It's the thing of pandemic movies. It's the thing of uh, apocalyptic type scenarios. And it's scary to be going through that right now. However, those of us that follow Christ are told not to be afraid because God is greater than our fears. Um, but how is this so much... This fear is so much more than a phobia. It's not being afraid of snakes or being afraid of the dark. It, it literally is life or death for some of us. We see every day death tolls raising. We see every day uh, numbers of cases in, uh, increasing. Just, just yesterday, I saw that uh, the U.S. now has more cases than any country in the entire world, including China, where it started. Um, these are scary days. These are things that we feel like, yeah, we should be fearful of. This is life. And this is death, and, and this is real. This is real right now. It's really happening. In Mark chapter 4, if you want to look up your Bible, Mark chapter 4, uh, we're going to be at verse 35. Um, there's a story that we all are familiar with, but I think is very pertinent, and I feel like the Lord has been speaking to me um, for this. Um, and this is, the, this is the story where Jesus calms the storm, in the midst of the storm. And so I just want to read it to you. Um, here in my, in my Bible, and you can have your iPhone out or whatever, or you can just listen and follow along. But it says this, As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. The lake was the Sea of Galilee. Let's cross to the other sea, side of this lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although some other boats did follow. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Now the Sea of Galilee is a very low spot. It's surrounded by hills and mountains, and uh, storms brew up very quickly. Um, you you don't even see it coming, and then it's it's happening. Uh, wind will 
whip down the mountainside into this and stir up uh, turbulence in the waters and, and storms. And the, but the people that are on the boat, several of them are fishermen that grew up on the Sea of Galilee. Um, they were not um, unknown. This was not unknown to them. This is stuff that they have had to deal with in the past. They were seafaring men um, who would do this constantly. Um, and yet they, they still um, were afraid. And this is what it says. Jesus, this is verse 38, Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? Or teacher, don't you care that we're going to die? This is life or death. And so the storm must have been extremely scary if the fishermen who grew up on this lake, uh, this sea, who dealt with this time and time again growing up uh, with their fathers going out and doing this, this must have been a fierce storm. And Jesus, in the midst of the storm, is asleep with his head on a cushion. He's asleep with his head on a pillow. And in the midst of all of this, he's not afraid, he's not moved, he's resting comfortably. Uh, while water is rushing into the boat, while waves are crashing into him, while they're going up and down um, the, the giant ebbs and flows of the water, they're dealing with all this. Jesus is resting, Jesus is asleep. And the disciples shake him up and say, Do you even care we're going to die? Do you even care that we are going to die. And I, I just want to pause here. Have you asked that question recently? Jesus, do you even care that we're dying? Jesus, do you even care that we're, we're sick? Do you, do you even care that we can't meet together? Do you care that we have to socially distance uh, from everyone? Do you care that I can't find food? Do you care that I can't find soap and hand sanitizer and all this? Do you even care? A lot of us will think, well, Jesus is just asleep on the job. He's, he, he's in the boat, but he's asleep on the job. He's just completely unaware. And I'm here to tell you, Jesus is not unaware. God is not unaware of the situation that we're going through. He's actually in the midst of it with us. Um, so don't be fooled. Don't, be, don't, be, don't be, act like this is a surprise to God. Like, oh my goodness, a virus came and I had no idea or no control. This is something that God ordained. This is something that God has allowed happen uh, to bring him glory. But I also like the other side of, the, of looking at this. Jesus was asleep, and Jesus was relaxing, and Jesus was unafraid. And I bring that up because I want you to think, in the midst of the things that cause us to fear, Jesus is not fearful. He's not afraid. He's not worried. He's not concerned. Because he is greater than the fear itself. He's greater than what's causing us to be afraid. See, Jesus knew that he was greater than them. The men in the boat didn't. The men in the boat didn't. We as Christians, we know with our heads that God is supreme and that God's over this. He's greater than the coronavirus, the, the COVID-19. He's greater than that. We know this with our heads, but our hearts, we can't really wrap around it. We ask questions like, well, God, if you cared, why didn't you do something about it? Well, God, if, if you care, if, you, if this was a big enough deal to you, then why won't you stop it? Why won't you just make people well? Why are you allowing people to die? Why are you allowing people to get sick? We don't have the answers to all those things. But we know that God is greater still. He goes on, don't you care that we're going to drown? Don't you care that we're going to die? And then Jesus woke up, he rubbed the sleep out of his eyes, and he stands up, and he rebukes the wind, and he rebukes the water, and he says to them, Silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped, and there was great calm. When Jesus speaks to this, I love what other, other versions say, Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Wind, stop blowing. Water, calm down, stop. And it says the water became like glass. Peace. Peace is the absence of fear. When you think about turmoil, you think about fearful situations, you think about struggling in life, you think about sicknesses and all these things that create anxiety for us. It's not peace. But when we experience peace, 
all our fears subside. Jesus says, peace, be still. See, I don't think he was just talking to the winds and the waves. I think he was talking to the men on the boat, too. Your fear needs to subside. Your fear needs to stop. Trust in me. I'm in the boat. I'm in the boat with you. I am doing something. I'm not afraid. I'm greater than you. You have the, the person. You have the, the God of the universe who is greater than you. What scares you, what you are fearful of, in the boat, in our heart, present in our lives. And then Jesus asks two questions, and I love this. Why are you afraid? First question, why are you afraid? I'm in the boat with you. I'm present in this situation with you. I'm going through it with you. And I'm not afraid. So why are you afraid? The second question he asks, do you still have no faith? I love that he uses the word still because these men had just been present with Jesus as he healed the lepers. They had seen him do miracles. They had seen him uh, confront uh, the Pharisees unafraid and unabashedly. And then he says to him, why are you still afraid? I'm not afraid. Why are you still afraid? And he's saying to them, you've seen me do all this, but your faith in me and your faith in God is so weak. It's so weak. Life can be scary. These times are scary. But Jesus is with us through it all. And he is greater than all these things. And he will continue to be with you. So as you're quarantined, as you're talking with your family, as you're cleaning your house, as you're doing sanitizing your hands and all these things, I want to leave you with a couple questions to, to, to reflect on or to talk with amongst the people that you're with. And they're simply this. These questions to consider are this. What are you afraid of? What are you really afraid of? Two, why? Are you afraid of it? Why are you afraid? Not just what are you afraid of, but why are you afraid of it? And then three, do you still have no faith? Do you still have no faith? And why? Why do you still have no faith? Discuss these with you and your friend, your family, your friends. Uh, take some time to reflect on these and ask God really to reveal the real answers to you. I also put on here, on the Facebook link here, um, some music that you can worship to. I ask you to take some time, think about it, really reflect on the Lord, and allow Him to speak to you in these crazy times. We love you. God bless you. Praying for you. Also, if you need to. God bless.